Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. We're your host, Jeremiah. And Rafina Antonetti. Wow. And we are here because we love Jesus. Yes. We love you. Yes. And we love the Word of God, giving it to you every day. Talking straight about the Bible. <laughs> God is so good. You know, we want to just go ahead and just dive in this morning because there's so much here. So um, today, as you can see, is part 23 of Proverbs 3. We Amen. have been on Proverbs 3 for 23 parts. Isn't that awesome? Because we just can't leave it. It's just so much there. And so to this portion of it is the Lord is our keeper. And we're going to be reading from Proverbs 3.26, where we left off yesterday. And, and um, the word says, for the Lord, it will be your confidence, firm and strong, and will keep your foot from being caught in a trap. Hmm. So if you don't see that word in a trap, that's because I'm reading from the Amplified Bible, which I love to read from. But we're also going to combine this today because of the word keep. The Lord is our keeper with Psalms 121, 1 through 8. And just to, because the word keep in the Proverbs is the same word keep in the Psalms. So we're going to read that right now. Amen. And it tells us, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my hub come? That's a question mark. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow my foot or your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel neither slumbers nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. Love it. The sun shall not smite you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil, he shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall guard your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Okay, so we're going to just give a little definition of that keep. In the, in the Webster Dictionary, it says, have or to retain possession of, cause, to continue in a specified condition, position, or course. Wow. So we know that God does these things, right? He has possession of us. Mm. Thank you, Lord. And he retains us. Mm. And then in the Bible's definition is, it's a verb meaning to watch, to keep, to preserve, to guard, to be careful, to watch over, to watch carefully over, or be on one's guard. And we know that God does that. The Hebrew word means to maintain or to observe something for a purpose and is followed by another verb indicating the purpose or the manner, such as Israel was to observe the laws of the Lord so as to do them. So that's a way of saying keep, as, as, as well as keep the Sabbath for it is holy. The word naturally means to watch over some physical object or to keep an eye on it. In the passive reflective stem, it means to be taken care of. Mm. In the reflective stem, it means to keep oneself. And the word in its intensive stem means to pay regard to or attach oneself to. So this word is beautiful. I love it. I got so excited about it because we have a keeping God. The power of his, the, 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 his keeping power is awesome and amazing. And no matter where we are in life, he keeps us. Well, what's interesting also is in Genesis, when we talk about the word keep, the Bible says that he created man, Adam, and he took him and put him in the garden to keep it. Now, the word keep, shamar, is very important because it represents, in its beginning point, remember, this is Genesis, as one that keeps the sheep, mm. one that protects the sheep from anything that will happen. But this word keep, shamar, would actually become to Israel a key word when he said, keep my law. The word keep also means to put 
a wall or, or a protective barrier around something to keep it from the predators. Now think about that. The Lord is my keeper. He has put a wall upon around me to keep me from the predators. Now also, what I want to share with you, because we started the song of Psalm 121, but it says a song of degree, excuse me, a song of degrees. We know what a song is, but you know what, a, the, in the Hebrew, a song is something like a three-strand rope that's twisted together and it wraps around you. So here God has given us a song, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, from whence shall my help come? But the, the word but the word degrees is two letters that are interesting. It is the ayim and the lamet. That is, it represents the eye and the staff of a shepherd. So in many degrees, God not only wraps us in his love, he gives us a song that we can walk with him because he eyes out everywhere we go and he leads us by the staff. Mm. He is the shepherd. And isn't that interesting that in Genesis, when God speaks to Adam, he says, keep the garden. I want you to be the shepherd of the garden. Do you know that the Garden of Eden is actually the picture of Israel? Mm. The garden is Israel, his people. That's why the Bible tells us in Jeremiah's of the church, the New Testament church and Israel, that we will be like a well-watered garden. God keeps our garden, doesn't he? God protects us from the predators, the, excuse me, the predators, doesn't he? And to lift up your eyes into the hills is awesome. Now, I'm going to let my wife get into this part right here because I'm going to come back and I'm going to share some, something with you, which is also well, beautiful. Well, I was looking at the word degrees as he was speaking, and it also can mean to elevate or to mm -hmm. um, go up. Like in stairs, you know, like, you know, like the degrees in temperature, you know, going mm -hmm. up. But the scripture that came to mind is that we go from glory to glory, that we don't stand, <laughs> we don't stand still in, in, in the Lord. We move upward. Our focus is upward. Our focus is heavenly. Our focus is always what, like our eyes are, are, are looking are to the, the hills. hills. Yeah, we're okay? looking up. We're always looking upward. Our position is upward because that's where our help comes from. Wow. Check this out. The word actually also, uh, degree means, is actually the word melah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Melah. Mm -hmm. Look, I want to give you the picture of these four words because she said about degrees ascending, etc., like steps going up the, the going uh, stairs. Up the stair. Okay. Now watch this though. The four letters of this means something that flows that is seen by the shepherd's staff that leads us to life. Mm -hmm. So we're just not going up. Mm -hmm. We're flowing up. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Jesus said that, that when let he told it he, yeah, let it flow. <laughs> he, Jesus told the Samaritan woman, whoever takes the water that I will give him to drink, it will flow up into mm -hmm. eternal life. Mm -hmm. And you know what's interesting that comes to mind right now? Isaiah chapter 2, where he says that the mountain of the Lord shall be established and people shall flow up to it. Mm. Notice where God is always flowing upward, and that's why we look upward. Now, what's interesting is the mountain. Now, you know, it's not easy to move a mountain, and some mm -hmm. mountains you can never you can never move them. I mean, Mount Everest, I mean, it would take you a thousand years if you want to move it, if you can. But, you know, God knows what he does when he makes a mountain. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, God is the creator. Imagine if he did something like this. Imagine if he took a squirrel and made it to be a mountain, you will find squirrels walking around with trees on their back. But imagine if he made mountains to grow nuts. But God knows what he's doing, how he creates things. Can you imagine that? Imagine that we look up to the mountain and God says, here's some nuts. <laughs> no, my friend, a mountain is powerful. That's why God made mountains. When you go to the to the Grand Canyon, 
You will see the Grand Canyon. It's not only beautiful, but do you know that they actually discovered, these are Christian scientists, and also the, uh, the secular scientists, they're learning some things. Do you know that the, that the, um, what I just said, the, 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 Grand, <laughs> the, Canyon. the Grand Canyon, because mm -hmm. <laughs> I just got off a little bit. The Grand Canyon was actually created during the flood of Noah. Mm. And they, you know how they know that? Because when they look at the ridges, the sides, they don't see levels of the canyon being, you know, excavated or being or growth. Mm -hmm. It's one level. It says that the waters came to such a place and then it went down. Folks, can you imagine that God created the Grand Canyon for us to go? When you're walking in the Grand Canyon, you're actually walking in a place where the waters of Noah went through. Yeah. And we lift up, that yes, mm -hmm. and I have a friend that just went there, actually two friends, but one friend that we just talked to a few weeks ago went there. He said, you could feel the presence of God there. Can't wait to go. It is, it is amazing. And as you look up to all these grand places, you can know that God is a powerful God. A young lady I know that went there, she climbed, she climbed up a tall hill and she said she had an experience there with God. She actually became born again there. Mm. Can you imagine that? Lift up your eyes unto the hill. Why? Because it is the degree, the mala of God, mm. where he tells us, step up to my chambers, come to my room, come to the place I have indicated for you, ascend unto me. This is your, pilgr your pilgrimage. Wow. Now, this word just got me all excited. Oh, go ahead. Today. Go ahead. Go ahead. No go ahead. You know, just, that's why I'm like, we're, we're going to be here for a little while because <laughs> this is um, just, just the first verse. The first verse. You know? um, just set your eyes, focus your eyes. Somebody was just preaching on that recently from our church, one of our pastors. Fix, he said, I, I fix my eyes on the Lord. Well, it says here, again, going back to Proverbs, the very root of what we're teaching this morning. For the Lord shall be your confidence and shall keep your foot from being taken. Mm -hmm. You know, again, the word taken means to be captive. Now, I want to share something with you that I was, I, well, I could say fell upon, but the Lord knows where to make you fall in Scripture. Yep. He sure does. <laughs> well, you know, the first verse of Psalms 121, I will lift up my eyes into the hills from whence... You know, from whence, for where does my help come? The gametria. We talked about gametria a lot, right, in our show. And it's it's the numbers. It's, it's the summarization of what something means. For example, this first verse comes out to be 2220. And I said, you know, I, I can't help but thinking about that we are in the 20th century and the 22nd year. And more than ever, we need to lift our eyes to the hill. But watch this now. When I looked up other verses of scripture that have the same gematria, that's where I got blown away. Jacob says concerning his son, Joseph. Remember, Joseph was sold to Egypt. He didn't see him anymore. And his sons went down to Egypt to buy food during the famine. Notice this is a famine. And Jacob... When his sons came back, they said, look, we can't go buy more food unless <clears throat> we send our younger brother with us, Benjamin, because the Pharaoh, or excuse me, the governor wants to see him, mm -hmm. which was um, Joseph. Joseph. Mm -hmm. So understand, this was Joseph's little brother. But when he came back, look what the father tells him in Genesis 44, verse 28. And the one went out from me, and I said, surely he is torn in pieces, and I saw him not since. He's saying I, he was afraid to send Benjamin because he said, my, my other son, Joseph, when they brought the, his robe to Jacob, they said, you know, they, they lied. They said, you know, Jacob was, um, excuse me, Joseph was torn up by an, a wild animal. And so notice here that he's saying, I'm afraid to let Benjamin go. Now, what's interesting is Benjamin represents the right hand the son of the right hand, because that's what his name means. Mm -hmm. Son of the right hand. We know that's Christ. But watch this now. He was afraid. And here in Psalms 121, he says, I will lift up my eyes to the hill from where my help is going to come from. 
And when I saw the scripture, it has the same gematria. It says that we should not be afraid to let go. We should not be afraid when famine comes. God says, lift up your eyes. Now, here's the other one. Leviticus chapter 14, verse 1 says, And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, This shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing shall uh, he shall be brought unto the priest. Now, I'm going to go to verse 35 of that same chapter. And he that owns the house shall come and tell the priest, saying, It seems to me there is as if were a plague in the house. Mm. This is the same gematria of Psalms 121. We see it first with Jacob. Do not be afraid of plagues. Do not be afraid to let go. And here, the same one is saying that God will also cleanse mm. the house from leprosy. And this is what's interesting. The woman who bled for 12 years knew this law. And when she saw the high priest, this is commanded that the high priest is to go and look at the house and see if there's a plague in it, and he is to ritually clean it. But instead, she looks at Jesus and she says, if I touch the hem of his robe, I will be healed because he is the one that I look up to. Amen. Amen. And she looked up to Jesus, and when she ran to Jesus, Jesus healed her by the power of his person. Wow. One more. Here is in the New Testament, a word that comes out to 2220, the same amount of Psalms 121. Paul says, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity. The word that you use, Rafina. Mm -hmm. To the law of sin. So here, the gematria, captivity, is 2220. Wow. So first we see Jacob's, God tells us, don't be afraid to let go. In Leviticus, it tells us he is the one that cleanses the house. Mm -hmm. He's the high priest that when we look up to him, he cleanses our lives. Wow. And when we look up to him, we shall not come into captivity. I just had to bring that out today because it's deep, but if you look at it, it makes sense. We, when we lift up, I said, why don't we lift our, hell, uh, our eyes to the hills for? It is, number one, not to be afraid. Wow. Number two, let him cleanse the house. Let him clean us up. Number three, to keep us from captivity. Amen. And also, we will learn from his ways when we're looking up. There you In go. Isaiah 2, 3, it says, And many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths, for the Lord will go out from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Wow, think about that. How beautiful that is. How beautiful that is. The house of the Lord, the house of the God of Jacob. And again, it says that we will flow up to it. Up. Mm -hmm. We will flow upward. See, the Christian life is upward. When we look unto the hills, we don't have to be afraid. Hallelujah. Fix your eyes upon the Lord, the author and finisher of your faith. Wow. The Lord bless you. We're going to continue this just a little more because there's so much more. It's too much. And uh, <laughs> it's too much. It's too much. But I, yeah. we say to you today, lift up your eyes to the hills. You know where your help is going to come from. And uh, tomorrow I'll probably share on how this is also related. Tuesday. Tuesday, right. Today's Friday. Have a wonderful weekend. But uh, Tuesday, um, I'm going to share on how this one verse of scripture is also tied in to Judah, the lion of the tribe of Judah, Amen. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Look up to him, for he roars down Ooh. on your enemies and destroys them Thank you, Lord. simply by you looking up. Ooh, hallelujah. God, God bless, bless you. you. Have a wonderful day.